At last, it is finally time for a part two. You're probably thinking, part two to what? It's been so long since I've made a video. Well, I have a reason. The main reason is this part two right here, well, the part one got taken off of YouTube by Nintendo. So obviously, if the part one is taken down, I'm not really gonna be in a hurry to make a part two. But guys, I actually disputed and I won. So my video for how to mod your Switch is back up and getting views. And because of that, I can finally make the part two of apps you 100% need on your modded Switch. There's a good amount to go over. I'm not going to go over every single one in this list, but I'm going to show you guys some apps that are definitely going to make your experience on a modded Switch much better. I've also been very busy on Pokemon Legends ZA on my main channel, so I've been doing a lot of videos there. That's also why I've been gone. And without further ado, let's go over the first app that you 100% need. So open up the album area while you're booted into your modded Switch. This is the homebrew menu. So this will show every app that you can use for homebrew on your Switch. And this is a pretty good amount to go through. The first one I'm going to go over right here usb file transfer this one is super beneficial so you launch it and you're like what is that you'll probably see this not really know what's going on but when you see this menu when you launch the app plug in your switch right here to a computer you can use the same cord right here that you actually use to mod your switch in the first place and you can not only take files from your sd card to your computer but also vice versa it makes it really easy there's a lot of apps right here that if you want to get on your switch you don't actually have to turn it off and do it that way you can just drag and drop the files on here. And the good part is I'm pretty sure this comes with having a modded switch. So you guys might already have this. One thing I want to mention real quick, there are apps like Tinfoil that are extremely popular for piracy reasons. Apps like this may or may not allow you to get free switch games, but I'm not going to go over how to get it or how to use it because uh, doing this will get your switch banned if you're not extremely careful. Trust me, it is not the same as having a modded 3DS where you can literally, in theory, just download any game you want and play it and have no issues. It's not the same on a switch. So so let's go over to app number two, which is Breeze. This one is not quite an app that you will 100% need. You could definitely go without using Breeze. This app is used for a variety of things, but a lot of people use it for the cheat menu. With this, you can enable cheats in games. Like for example, play Super Smash Bros and you control your friends by having infinite health. There's other apps though, where you can do the exact same thing. For example, this one, Edison. Upon launching this, I can see Pokemon Legends ZA. And if I click on it and then click on my user profile, well, there's nothing right now. One thing I have to reiterate just because it's been a while is if you want to actually use a modded switch don't get apps like this if you care at all about getting banned my switch is not banned it has not happened to me but just keep that in mind for yourself the next app or apps that you guys 100 truly do need is either checkpoint or this one right here jksv i think in 2025 a lot of people prefer jksv over checkpoint but i'll go over both so let's launch it real quick and if you oh the entire switch crashed so this is why you guys update your apps frequently if you guys update your switch and your switch is custom firmware and all that stuff but you don't actually update the custom firmware apps every so often they will go out of date and a lot of them will stop working so let's go back in there i guess we're not gonna give checkpoint a tutorial but i will mention it real quick this may be familiar for a lot of you guys this app checkpoint is commonly used on nintendo 3ds systems that are modded on a 3ds or switch you can use the checkpoint app to back up your save files and restore other save files on games. For example, a game like Pokemon Shield. If you have a really good save file, but you want to make a new save file on that same Nintendo account, you can back up your file and then make a new one. This will essentially make it so at any time you can swap back and forth between save files. It also allows you to take your save file onto an SD card and put it on a computer using apps like Pika Hex or an Animal Crossing save file editor. Pretty cool. I would definitely look into this, but checkpoint, yeah, it did not work for me because I haven't updated it in a while, but this one right here will work. JK SV. I don't know why I have two. You can see right here, this is February 23rd, 2023, and this is September 13th, 2025. This is a lot newer. So boot that up. It should show my account and whoa. This is every game I have on this account that I have save data for on this Switch. So let's just take a game like New Pokemon Snap. I have one file backed up. I don't know why I called it Fart, but I did. I don't really remember that. But I can click on New Backup right here, and it'll be based on your account name and then the current date on your Switch. So just press OK, and it'll back your current save file up on the SD card, and it only takes a couple seconds. Honestly, this is taking way longer than it normally does, but I also don't know the save data size of 
new Pokemon Snap. I don't know if it's 1 MB or 30 MB, who knows. Now that I've backed it up and have it right here, I can go to this other file and hit the Y button and then start holding down the A button. It says hold, keep holding, almost there. That's to make sure you really know what you're doing. Now I can just wait a couple seconds and I have swapped my save file on new Pokemon Snap. You can do this for any game. I only do this for games like Animal Crossing and Pokemon where they do not use the cloud saves. For something like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I would definitely not do this. Now I'm gonna move on to two different emulator apps. First, Melon DS. So let's click on that and I will have the link. Oh my gosh. Now I'm gonna move on to a popular emulation app, MGBA. Let's click on that and boot it up and you can see different ROMs right here. We got Pokemon Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Sapphire. So I'm gonna boot up Fire Red. So I'll click on that, it does load up pretty quickly and there we go. Something pretty cool about this is, as you guys saw, it did not bring me to the actual main start page. It just brought me in right on the game where I left off last time. It'll remember exactly where you were, so you don't have to really waste much time. You can just leave off at a random point and it'll remember. It runs perfectly fine, and something really cool is, of course, you could actually take off the Joy-Cons, put it into a TV, and dock it. Also, right now, you can see I'm doing a battle. Squirtle versus Rattata. I'll press the home menu button, go to the, uh, whatever it's called, the album menu, and then I'll go back over to MGBA and then click on fire red and watch this. I'm not even doing any cuts. There we go, we're back in battle. Since it's running in the homebrew menu right here and not as an actual game, it will not bring up the menu like, it, you know, if you click on a normal game like this and then you press the home menu button, you actually have to press X again to confirm you wanna close it. That's not the case with this. And just in case if you guys forgot, you can hold the R button on your Joy-Con and then click on the album to view the album like normal. Now you'll have full access like normal to your screenshots and videos. The next one I recommend if you don't have immediate access to a computer all the time, like if you'd like to bring your Switch with you places. This one right here, NX Shell. So click on that and you'll see right here it's actually an SD card viewer and manager. I can scroll down and access stuff like my ROMs, this folder, ROMs, GBA. I can see stuff like my games that I showed just a little bit ago and their save files. This is pretty handy. I did show earlier that there was this app that should come installed with all of your modded Switches, USB file transfer, but this is if you have access to a device like a computer. NX Shell, on the other hand, you can use at any time. I can just boot this up on a road trip whenever I want. The next one I think you guys will like, it's this one right here, NX Themes Installer. On my home menu, as you guys saw probably several times, I don't have a custom theme, but let's read what this says. To install custom themes, you need to extract the home menu first. This process may take several minutes. Don't let your console go to sleep mode and don't press the home button. Press A to start. I'm actually learning this app with you guys. So I'm pressing the home menu button and that was extremely extremely fast. There's no way it's already done. Oh, I see how it works. Okay, so it'll show your local device IP. So 192.168, a this is the IP address of this device at my network. You can then go on a computer and connect to that and get themes, but if this is too complicated for you, you could just do it the old way. Copy your themes in the themes folder on your SD card and try again. You could fully turn off your switch, take out your SD card and put it in a computer, or use that USB data file transfer app that I showed earlier. I'm not going to do this right now, but I'll put a picture up on screen of how your Switch home menu would look with a custom theme. It's pretty cool. You can use themes from other people or actually make your own. Also, I did show MGBA earlier for Game Boy Advance games, but there is another one which is Melon DS. This one, I'm sure you guys could assume it is for DS games, and I've actually played ones like Pokemon Platinum on here before, but I did have big issues with lag. It was a very laggy experience. You guys might be able to do this better than me though, because you can overclock your Switch to perform at a higher rate. This right here, Sys Clock Manager. This will let you overclock your Switch, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can see in here all this stuff that you normally couldn't see on a Switch. Uh, application profiles. Okay, so this is like for custom games, like for Legend ZA, if I wanted settings specific to that game. All your frequencies. It's a lot of stuff that honestly, I don't have much knowledge about. I don't know. This app, Sys Clock Manager, I would not say it's one of those apps that you 100% need, like the title says, but if you want to do stuff like that, I just wanted to mention it. For emulation, there is also RetroArch. I'm sure you've probably all heard of this or at least like 80% of you guys have heard of RetroArch. This app, I'm going to put it on screen right now. Oh my gosh, RetroArch is available on so many different devices. It's crazy. There's one more app I'll show for today and there probably will not be a part two for this. And guys, hold on. Look at my cat real quick. Uh, here she is. Boom. 
Oh, the people want to see you. Sorry, guys, for the kitty interruption. But come on, if you guys are mad at that, I don't know. You're a sour person. You cannot be mad at a little cat interruption. But here's the homebrew app store. It's the final app I'll be showing for today. I don't think there will be a part two for this because there's simply not as many cool apps on the Switch as on 3DS. Also, it's just riskier because on your Switch, you can get banned without, you know, having too much of an effort. You can get banned pretty easily. On a 3DS, though, no matter what you do, you're not getting banned. But let's look in here, though. So this this is the homebrew app store. It's kind of like the eShop, but for homebrew games and apps. And they have something just like this on the 3DS. I think it's called the Universal Updater. Here's MGBA, here's JKSV. Apps I already showed earlier, you can just find them in here if you don't want to find them in the description of this video. So let's look through a little bit. Let's see what we can find. Here's Hecate, which if you have a modded Switch, you already have Hecate. Funkin' Rewritten. Friday Night Funkin' Game. I'm not really sure what that would be. I don't think that's even a real game on Switch, so that must be like a custom port. It is on overlay. So this app right here is for cheats, like I mentioned earlier, I think. Some type of Pac-Man game, Land Helper, I don't know what that is. Here's Sysclock, we already have that one. NX Dump Tool, this could be used to dump your cartridges. If you have an actual physical cartridge, you can turn that into a ROM. Retro Arc, we mentioned that one earlier. This one right here though, SysDVR, that's one I actually kind of forgot about. This will kind of let you use your Switch as a capture card without owning a capture card. Cheese it the game, what the the, I mean, these crackers are delicious. I hope they sponsor me one day, but what is this? Recognized by the official Cheez-It company? Really? It was last updated in 2023, so it's been a while, but 1,800 brave soldiers have tried it out. But you guys get the point. You can scroll through here if you're interested in finding all these different apps and games for your modded Switch. There's Cena NX. I think we're done in here, but guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Plenty more videos are coming soon. That's a promise. That's a guarantee. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.